working today on a new day dawning, which is going to be a seascape painting uh, that features a small uh, cottage or cabin along the ocean. You know, it's interesting. Uh, every painting seems to have its own unique origin. Uh, and I like to think of it in comparison with the birth of a child. Um, you know, each child ends up being brought into this world in a unique way. And it's very true with paintings as well. The conception phase of a painting often starts in the back of your mind. You're not quite sure how the pieces are going to fit together. And uh, you're, as an artist, thinking about uh, something maybe as simple as an emotion that ties to uh, a place you've been. Something maybe that is almost like a, a little glimpse uh, of an emotion in the back of your mind. You're not quite sure what it ties to. In the case of the painting we're going to start today, uh, I had a very distinct feeling in my head of the feeling of water and the feeling of being at a home that was near the water, near a lily pond of some sort. I just sort of had this uh, idea in the back of my head, and uh, it was the conception point. It just hung there in the back of my head for maybe six months or so. And uh, as I've been working on this series about Spring Gate, an imaginary gate uh, that celebrates the beauty of springtime, I connected that, gee, I want to do another painting in Springgate, and I want to include this idea of a house by the water. And so um, I kicked that around for a little while, as artists are like to do. And uh, after a certain point, other pieces to the puzzle began to fit together. I began to see a roadway, and then I began to see a sense of brilliant radiance to the sky. And the final piece in the puzzle came this morning as I looked out the window from the studio and saw the sky just ablaze with this luminous light as the clouds had been clearing and light was radiating uh, from beneath, illuminating those little wispy touches of cloud. And it just dawned on me, I had a color scheme in mind, a pink undertone to the sky and to the clouds and a radiant bluish gray, steel gray kind of color to the sky, the base of the sky. So the conception, if you will, uh, in this process of giving birth to another painting can take various forms. Uh, I like to feel that God will put the pieces together any way he chooses because I'm quick to point out the ideas as well as the execution of the painting uh, is so, so beyond me at times, I, I just stand and marvel uh, as the painting unfolds. I have in mind a procedure I'm going to use on this painting. Um, if you come up to me at one of our public appearances or one of our shows uh, and ask me to describe my painting technique, uh, the best thing I can do is to tell you that it really varies painting by painting and that I often have no idea how it will all fit together and how it will end up. Each painting takes on its own characteristics of procedure. And sometimes I jump right in and sketch with charcoal. Uh, at some point I mix up big batches of paint and just start painting the whole composition right in so it looks like a finished painting uh, two hours after I've begun, begun. And then at other times the Lord will almost give me a chess strategy as though my painting were a chess game. And I can kind of see the plays six strokes ahead or six moves ahead that I'm going to be using. And um, I'm so thankful when he does that because I can kind of plan ahead and know where I'm going with the painting. And that is what we have today. So when we see my procedure at work, know that it is not necessarily a typical procedure any more than any other of my techniques or procedures is typical. There is no typical procedure in a Thomas Kincaid painting. Each one has a life of its own. And uh, that's the exciting part for me, the artist. So let's begin mixing our paint. As you look at the palette surface, you notice it's very smooth. Uh, the paper I use on the palette is 
uh, polyethylene coated. Uh, it was just butcher paper, freezer paper that uh, you could buy at any supermarket. But I put it on a roller so I can roll it through and mix areas within here uh, and then be able to roll through fresh area. But the starting point is the white and I'm just using a titanium white commercially made. Nothing, nothing uh, unusual about it. And I'm laying the paint out in measurable lines. In this case about uh, three lines worth of paint. And then I'll put the lid back on and uh, prepare uh, for mixing. As I am mixing uh, here, we'll be taking some paint from the palette. In this case, some of my blue. This is a ultramarine blue, a French ultramarine blue. And you notice when you mix uh, the pigment with white, uh, it gets a little bit hot in color. By that I mean it's, you know, it's pretty intense. It's not necessarily not necessarily subtle. It hasn't been brought back down to a subtle state. So I'll mix a little bit of warm tone in to bring it down in chroma. The mixing procedure is done with palette knife, not with brush in this case, just because I want to mix a bunch up. And when I get my pigments finished, I'll be switching to brushes. So I've gotten to the point where the mixture is where I want it. I've got two mixtures. And uh, what I'm going to do is test these. If we can see this on the camera, uh, you can see that the color, the first color I'm picking is a, a kind of a, a warmish gray. And then the second color I'm picking is more of a bluish gray, which in contrast to the other looks pretty, pretty blue, but it's really uh, actually kind of a grayish violet. And so now having tested those two colors, what I want to do, I've mixed up nice batches of each and I'm going to take my uh, uh, biggest brush that I can find uh, of my artist grade brushes. I'm not going to be using my big uh, house painter's brush, but I'm going to take a, a number 12 uh, brush. This is a bristle blend, and I'm going to start. Now, actually what I'm going to do is start with my darker color, and we'll just get it laid in first from the top to the bottom. I love this phase of a painting because you're just just playing with paint. It just gets to the point where you're returning to what got us all started painting as children, which was the love, the tactile love of paint. I mean, just think of it. You move your hand, and each stroke is recorded. I mean, that's a pretty awesome thought when you think about it. Uh, you're just literally um, recording the brain waves that are motivating that hand. And uh, you're seeing something from nothing, something emerge. You're taking paints and uh, creating a series of brush strokes. And it is fun. I always liken painting to play. People say, gee, you work for a living. I say, no, I'm retired. I do my hobby for a living uh, because I do never grow tired of just the, the fun of painting and just putting those strokes on canvas. So now I've really gotten to the point where I've laid in my gray on the top surface here. And it's a very delicate layer of gray. And I brought it down to my warmer, lighter gray. Again, it is kind of subtle. I mean, the one is a little bit on the blue side, and then the other gets more into a warm gray. But they both just are very uh, neutral. And then I have brought in the mixing through the use of this fan bristle. And then following the fan bristle, 
I bring in the fan sable, which is, uh, or not sable, but uh, I think it is a synthetic hair of some sort, but very soft. And what we have is a smooth transition. Now this surface is not in any way to be confused with uh, finish uh, work, obviously. Uh, it is the beginning point, and what we will see is I will now, after it dries, begin to work the clouds uh, into the painting. I'm going to do it very delicately and keep a, a sense of, of smoothness to the technique right up to the, the last stages of the painting, because the smooth technique will allow, I think, some of the detail. I want to put a very tight sense of detail into those clouds and into this painting. Uh, so we're going to put this uh, aside at this point and allow it to dry. The procedures I've used up till this point uh, have been very deliberate. I've uh, calculated out the direction I wanted to go with the painting. And uh, what I did is I took my panel and I coated it first with a light pink mixture that was mixed with some liquin, which is a uh, alkyd based uh, thinner medium that, uh, that will cause the paint to have a nice surface to it. it when it dries, it seals very uh, completely. Then I came back in and I put this blue-gray uh, mixture, uh, very delicate, uh, blending very carefully using uh, my fan blender so that um, when the mixture starts at the top, it, gradu it graduates very, very slowly uh, to the bottom. <coughs> now, today I'm going to start sketching the composition in, and I have done, as usual, my sketch, which uh, in this case is uh, um, just sort of an indication of where I want to go with the painting. I don't try to achieve a complete uh, tonal representation of the composition. I just suggest some of the tones, but basically I want to get the placement of form set. Now I've gotten the basic lay-in at least sketched, which will allow me now to come in and finish the lay-in using other colors. I use that gray kind of tone throughout just to give myself a few ideas of where I want to go with this composition so I can kind of see the basics. Then I take a larger brush, again a bristle brush, and I'm going to go ahead and begin to define other areas, such as the sky. We want to start suggesting uh, some of the sky, the moods of the sky. As I begin to develop the uh, opaque areas, I'm conscious of the color mood I created in the sky, I always think back on Constable's statement, the great English landscape painter who said, the sky sets the tone for the whole painting. And uh, that's really true. I've started now a mood in my sky that uh, is really going to be helpful for me. In fact, uh, it's going to sort of set a coloristic statement for where I want to go. Now, I'm going to be glazing down some of these yellowish uh, amber tones uh, and bringing more luminosity to it uh, as I work. But um, initially, I at least have a color uh, statement that I'm going to be working into. I'll put the trees in and other areas uh, and try to completely block in the entire painting uh, now uh, so that we can have a finished look. Uh, of the painting and I can get an initial impact of uh, how the painting is going to uh, feel. With the lay-in finished, we begin to detail. Um, what I'm doing is I'm working really from distance to foreground. I like to put in the far distant areas so that it kind of again sets the tone for what I'm going to do as I bring the eye forward. 
I'm painting a reflective ocean here. I've put the sky in and uh, I'm attempting to bring some of that light into the ocean. At this point, I'm going to refine the drawing on our little cottage. And I decided to eliminate the one uh, hipped gable and just instead put up a standard gable with a little small roof uh, over a nice bay window of some sort. I'm going to bring all kinds of bushes and things that will grow up onto our roof and then anchor it down on my composition uh, through a walkway. I like the forms of this better. This is all freehand drawing using a square charcoal. As I get down to the point where I'm putting the light in, I want to have those rays of light just radiating out uh, from the sky. And, uh, of course, the centerpiece of our light is going to be the sun. And uh, so we're going to put that on in our strongest, lightest light. And then what we do is we just uh, sort of bring, feather that light out a little bit. And I, I like to keep it uh, strong, but yet subtle enough that it just doesn't dominate the painting. So as I bring, bring the sun into clarity there, I want to just let some lights, just the radiating lights sort of come out and then feather those edges. Kind of like God's radiance, His glory is just breaking through. I always see nature in terms of God's creative brilliance. I mean, <laughs> the most we can hope to do as artists is try to take the beauty that God created and sort of reformulate that into uh, something that sort of suggests the feelings we get when we stand in front of nature. And when I see the sun peering out from clouds and the radiance breaking through, I always think, there's God's glory. In fact, we have a little game we play with our kids where we'll say, kids, look, do you see God's light shining through? Do you see God's light? And they'll look over and, I see it, I see it, I see God, I see God's light. It's a wonderful thing to see the clouds parting and the light breaking through. This painting will have that allegorical sense to it of light pouring through. I mean, the title of the painting is A New Day Dawning, and I really want to capture something that is a point of contact for people everywhere who may be in a, peri a period in their life where they feel as though the clouds have sort of rolled over and, and covered up uh, the light a little bit, and uh, we'll let a new day begin to dawn through this painting, hopefully. Oftentimes a painting will take unusual twists and turns as you work on it. Um, and as I was working on Do A New Day Dawning, I began to feel as though I wanted to eliminate the road off here to the right of the composition and instead bring more of a subtle pathway. That way I could get a nice uh, little fence coming along here that would kind of beckon you in uh, to the world uh, that we've created in this middle distance. It goes to show what I have felt for so long, which is that ideas seem to come out of nowhere. And uh, for me, in my faith in God, I have felt uh, that uh, it's almost a way of God sort of reaching down and saying, no, do it this way. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. And in this case, we're going to put some foliage to stage the pathway and bring our eye around. And then, of course, we're going to put a little lawn and other things over here. I always tell artists and students, never be afraid to follow a new idea. 
Uh, don't be locked in stone as you start your painting. Let it evolve. It's a journey of discovery, especially for the artist. Uh, I got to tell you, you know, the process of creating a painting uh, is like the unfolding of a miracle. I mean, when you see nature in bloom in springtime, uh, you just are awestruck uh, by the beauty uh, that unfolds before you, and you are thankful to God for His creative hand in, in celebrating a new season. And uh, I feel that way about each painting. As I put the final strokes on, it's almost as though it unfolds, like I'm getting to watch spring uh, happen before my eyes. And, uh, you know, you just can't totally take credit for what you end up seeing on your canvas. You just have to know there's a God. I always tell people, if uh, you have any doubt that, uh, that God is real, uh, just uh, sit sometime in the studio of an artist, and you'll know uh, that God can really touch an artist and, uh, and work through his hand. Um, at least I believe that, and I do feel that this painting is, uh, is a miracle unfolding. As I have been working, I have had one thought in mind. Add the little touches that will bring the light out. I just keep hearing that phrase in my mind, more light, more light. Uh, and so I'm actually at this point doing raised, you know, delicate strokes with a lot of raised detail to it and uh, it just comes down to the fact that you know you're just each stroke adds just a little bit of light Almost done. A few more strokes and we'll be there. This has been a fun painting to work on, and I got to tell you, I am so excited about different details with the painting uh, completed that have sort of emerged on their own. For example, the ship uh, that is sailing out to sea, we have a sense uh, in which it almost represents the voyage of life. You know, you sail into the unknown, and yet each day brings the dawning of a new day. Sunlight is pouring through the clouds, reminding us that God is in his heavens, all is right with the world. And uh, of course the cottage has been an attempt to bring color and light and a sense of human coziness to this very dramatic setting of nature. And uh, my prayer is with this painting that people who might be in a phase of their life, that they need a new day to dawn, uh, that this painting will bring that experience of hope to them. This is Thomas Kincaid again, thanking you for being with us and uh, reminding you to share the light.